What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you a way to save hundreds of dollars on your fishing gear. Before you go pier fishing and beach fishing, check this video out. So we're headed to Florida this Sunday and it's going to be awesome. We haven't been fishing for a while so we really needed to get a list together and um, we got all our gear packed and we want to show you guys how we prepped all of our stuff and how we ended up saving a lot of money while prepping at home. So the prep work, the prep work we put into it is where we save a lot of money. A lot of times we go to Florida and we forget to bring a lot of different kinds of tackle, a lot of different kinds of things and we end up buying it all in the bait shops. Those bait shops overcharge and I end up spending a couple of hundred dollars that I was not expecting to spend and uh, it kind of stinks knowing I could have gotten all of that for a lot cheaper. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys all the gear that I like to bring to the beach and the pier and where I get it from. Okay, so starting with my pier fishing setup, okay? I have, I'm bringing my uh, Shimano CI4 Plus and I've paired it with a seven foot medium light rod right here. So this will, this will be my sabiki rod, this will be my bait rod. And I've got, I think, 10 pound test on here. Aaron gave me this reel for my birthday and I got this rod from a vintage store for pretty cheap and this is a good quality rod right here. So one of my first recommendations, a good place to get your gear are thrift shops and vintage shops. Um, a lot of times they're selling rods for very cheap because they don't know the value of it. Whereas if you go, if you go to Bass Pro, you're going to easily spend a hundred some bucks. Okay, my next pier fishing rod is going to be <laughs> can't choose. my Penn International. This is going to be my big fish rod on the pier. I've got on here, I think, 65 pound braid. And this conventional reel is going to serve me well because I don't really need to cast out too far when I'm fishing on the pier. So this is going to work really well. And I've got this vintage rod again. This is another vintage rod from, from another thrift store, from another vintage store that we got for very cheap. And this thing is strong. So one of the greatest ways to save money is to buy, is to buy older vintage stuff. I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't believe it. Take a look at all my vintage stuff here, <laughs> okay? I, I've been buying and researching a lot of these older vintage stuff, and we found that they're really strong and they're built like tanks. They'll last a really long time for you, and they're really easy to work on yourself. So like these reels right here, really easy to work on yourself. I spent like $30 each reel. Rather than spending $200 for a, a fancy modern reel like this. But this leads me to my last rod for my pier fishing. This is gonna be uh, another big fishing rod, just in case I don't wanna use this kind of rod. I've got my spinner. And this is on a seven foot medium heavy rod. And for all my big fish rods, I usually like to have 30 to, 30 to 40 pound braid on my line. The next big way we save money is we buy all of our sinkers, all of our hooks, all of our swivels online prior to going on the trip. Look, last time we went to Florida, we ended up spending 200 some bucks just on sinkers, just on hooks, leader line, all that stuff that we could have gotten for really, really cheap online. So one of my favorite sources is Amazon. Everybody knows what Amazon is, well hopefully you do, and they ship in like within two days or something like that. So here are, oops. So here are the pyramid sinkers I'm bringing. I bought a box of them off of Amazon for something like 60 cents a piece, whereas if you went to the store, you'd be spending, if you went to the bait store, you'd be spending probably $1.25 each. So right there, we cut the cost in half of traveling with, with sinkers. And I, I bring two ounces, and I bring three ounces. So the general difference between my pier setup and my surf setup really is the size of my rods and the size of my reels. On a pier, you don't necessarily need to cast very far, so you don't need very long rods like my surf rods. This is a 10-foot Mojo Surf right here. You don't need that for the pier. At least I found that I don't need that. Um, so smaller and shorter rods, and have one bait rod and one big fish rod. That'll be for the pier. Um, for the terminal tackle, we don't really need to worry too much about packing too much stuff because we've got 
the Senko Skipper Pier Fishing Adventure Guide that we've been making and, and, and helping other people out. So we've got all these tackle kits full of stuff, so we don't really have to pack too much about that. And I'm pretty thankful about that, Aaron. Yeah, we're just gonna use We just have so much tackle around the house now <laughs> that like, this is, this is our pier kit right here. If anyone is interested in this kit and they don't wanna go out and buy all the gear themselves individually, we sell the kit. It's in the link in the description below. If it can help you out, check it out. If not, I'll, I'll provide a link to where I can find all these cheap parts right here for. And you guys can order them individually. So this is a size 2 hook that I have in the kit. The size 4 hooks for bait fish. Um, beads work well. And swivel so your line don't tangle. This adventure kit comes with an adventure guide, which is really what I think is the coolest part about this kit. Um, it t not only teaches you how to tie the rigs for the pier, but it also teaches you uh, how to choose which bait to use, how to read the tides, how to choose your sinker size, which sinker do you use, um, how to figure out where the fish are, where are the fishing hot spots when you're at the pier, and how to choose which rig to use and when. This is a great reference guide to have in your backpack. If you're new to this, this is great to have in your backpack so that you can refer to this anytime you have a question, anytime you're not catching fish, refer to this guide. So this is available in the link below. Uh, if, you don't want, if you don't need the tackle and you just wanna read the guide, I know a lot of international people out there watch the channel. We don't ship internationally currently, but we have this in PDF format so you can print and laminate it yourself. It's a great crash course I would recommend. So this is what I'm bringing to the pier. My adventure kit with all the tackle. I'm probably gonna bring like four or five of these tackle boxes. Smaller bait rod, 10 pound test braid. A bigger fish rod, 60 pound braid. And another bigger fish rod with a heavy Shimano Stratic. It's gonna work well on the pier. Now let's move on to my surf setup. So now surf fishing is a little bit different of a setup. When I'm surf fishing, I want a long enough rod to keep my line out of the weeds. I want a long enough rod so I can cast my line out for it far enough to the trough. So that's why I choose a nine to 12 foot rod. This is a, this is a nine foot rod made by St. Croix. A little bit pricey, but it has lasted me a very long time. Um, so this is our nine foot medium power graphite rod. And with this, I'll put on my Stratic. So this, this reel will double over as my surf reel as well. This I use for the pier and the surf. So there's my setup right there. Like I said, for my bigger fish, I like to have 30 to 40 pound braid on here. Just because I've had so many experiences with big fish snapping me off, it's time to, you know, I don't, I don't want to miss that anymore. So that's my surf rod number one. I'm bringing two surf rods. This time, I'm going to be bringing more vintage reels and stuff because one, they work really well. They're really easy to work on in case anything happens. They were cheap, and we're going to be comparing how well these vintage reels work against these modern reels. And I think that they'll hold up pretty well. So we're gonna have to see about that. I got this reel for probably $30 online and I think it'll work really well as a surf reel. This is called a Rue Pacific. It's a rumor. And these work well for beach fishing. I know, we know that. Um, these were made to be beach fished. The only little bit of annoying part to me is the clicking. <laughs> it has to click when you when you reel it in. The rod that I'm using is a, is an old St. Croix rod made of fiberglass. And this is gonna work well so that I can cast bait out, just leave it there, move it around, bait fishing kind of stuff. More so than lure fishing. Because the tip is hard to work since it's so floppy. So this is my more fun rod that I'm gonna use. It's called an Alvi Sidecaster. This is a very popular kind of reel in Australia. And the special part about this reel is that it, it casts in a very unique way. 
So check it out. You have your line up here. Mm -hmm. You grab your line, mm -hmm. pinky here, and it twists. Look at that. And then you cast it, grab the line, close it. And look at that. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna be using this on the beach to see how it works out. I got this from online for $15, okay? This thing has lasted for a really long time, you can tell. And it's really simple inside of here, so it's not gonna break. These are meant to last for a long time. So this is what I'm saying. You don't need to be buying the most expensive stuff if you're just starting. You don't need to get the best reel right off the bat. Start out with something vintage, try it out. I think the vintage stuff has much higher quality than buying stuff from Walmart. Because this stuff was built back then in a different way. It was built so that it would last for a really long time. Whereas things now are built so they'll break, so that you'll buy more. So think about that. So for our tackle, for our rigs, the stuff that we're going to actually catch fish with on the beach, this time we're not going to bring as many lures. What we're going to be bringing is all of our terminal gear to tie our rigs and catch fish with bait. Now, a lot of times I see anglers struggle with picking brands, picking hook sizes, picking sinker sizes. Um, we've got the Adventure Surf Kit here, which will help with all of that too. It's basically the same thing as the Pier Kit, except different information for the surf, and they're different. Trust me, fishing on the surf is different than fishing on the pier. It's not just ocean fish is ocean fish. They're different, and I'm gonna explain it all in here, how it's different, how you can find the hot spots. Um, and if you guys don't want to hustle and find all of your own individual gear and, and have to select whatever brands, different hook sizes, I would recommend you get our kit. So the surf box is different than the pier box. For surf, you really want to have pyramid sinkers so that it'll anchor down into the sand. Now I include a three ounce sinker and a two ounce sinker. So we try to make it as versatile as possible. We put tips that are universal to anyone around the world. Oh, another thing I always forget to bring, Aaron, mm -hmm. is the sand spikes mm -hmm. and the aerator. Mm -hmm. See, that's what gets me too. I forget to bring my sand spikes, which I buy almost every time I go somewhere. Literally every time. So I have like a like hundred sand spikes sitting in my house and I always forget to bring it. So bring a sand spike because that really helps you on the beach. Yeah, similar with like a bucket. Like we always forget buckets and then we have to go get shrimp and buy a bucket. Like we're just gonna pack a bucket this time. We're, no, I think the most important part is packing an aerator as well if you want to use live bait. Yeah, pack an aerator. It's really, it's, it's cheap on Amazon. Bring it in your bag. You don't have to buy it from a bait store. All right, our conclusion. Pier fishing and surf fishing is a ton of fun, but it sucks up a lot of money. I hope that I was able to help you guys maybe think of out of the, out of the box solutions uh, to save you some money while fishing on the pier, while fishing on the beach. So my, my, my money saving tips, number one, if you're getting yourself new gear, if you're getting yourself gear from Walmart, consider looking on eBay for vintage stuff. They look bad ASS, they're built like tanks, and they feel great, and they're a good price. Tip number two, buy in bulk. Buy in bulk. You'll save a lot more money in the long run. Buying from bait stores is really convenient, but your wallet will start getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you realize, I can't stay here anymore, I gotta go home. And tip number three, if you want us to assemble all of this for you, the link is in the description below. If you simply just want to read through our guide, we've got a PDF for it, for both of them. So check out the links in the, in the description below. Um, I really hope that this can help you. Uh, I, keep, I keep talking about these kits because I really think it's going to help any kind of beginners who really need help. That's why we made them, okay? While I have you guys here, I would like to bring to your attention some issues that I've been thinking about. So I've been told recently by a few international subscribers that there is no fishing regulation in a lot of different countries. No fishing regulation meaning you can catch whatever you want, you can catch whatever size you want, you can catch it however you want, and you can eat literally anything you want out of the ocean. 
And these subscribers were complaining to me saying that this is not right. That this is, this is why the fish are smaller in our area. The people who are saying stuff to me about this, you guys can do something about it. And I really think that if this situation applies to you, you can make a tremendous impact by continuing to share this idea of, of not keeping everything you catch. If you catch little small fish like this, just let it go. Just let it go. Like this, let it go, let it grow, right? If you're catching a whole bunch of fish left and right, left and right, and you're keeping them all and you're not eating them, that has a really big negative effect on the waters that we fish. If we want to continue enjoying this water, and continue enjoying the ocean, continue enjoying fishing, we need to be responsible with what we do. We can't go to a spot, make it more of a mess, and leave. If anything, we should go to our spot and leave with it cleaner than you came. You can make a difference by simply sharing this idea, sharing this message, continuing to promote this, continuing to, to be an advocate for catch and release. And you know, I'm not all catch and release. I'll eat my fish, but I'm not taking every fish I catch. I'm not taking little fish like this. I'm not taking little fish like this. I'm taking the sizable ones, and I'm taking one or two for me and my family. That's it. If we want sustainable fishing, it starts with us. It starts with this generation right here. And it's not just people in the US. This goes all over the world. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you guys learned something. And um, if you have any questions about the stuff that I'm using, or if you need any help, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. All you have to do is search for Senko Skipper Fishing Community. We're on there and very active, so ask us any questions you got on there. Thank you guys. See you next week in Florida.